I got this Nikon N80 back in 2008 or 2009 when I first wanted to try shooting film and something other than the consumer point and shoots our family used for special occasions. I used it for a couple of years and stopped and it was only this January 2022 that I thought of picking it up again. By then, the back cover won't lock and the lens had a lot of fungus, so I sent it off to Dong's camera shop in Capo Manila for repair. They fixed the rear cover so it would latch again and also cleaned all the fungus from the lens. After dropping in two fresh CR123A batteries, it boots up fine. You can see the empty film compartment indicator and cycle through aperture shutter priority manual modes. This is a modern electronic film SLR made in the late 90s so you cannot use it if it has no battery. It recognizes DX coded 35mm films. Just pause the video to see the price for the repair and fungus removal. Next up is a Canon EF mount Tamron 75-300mm telephoto lens given to This was also a mid to late 90s product. It can communicate electronically with all modern day electronic interchangeable lens Canon cameras. Although the autofocus is a bit hinky with my EOS M50 camera mounted with an adapter. After having two lenses cleaned and one SLR body fixed successfully, I decided to send a bunch of other vintage cameras I had around the house to them for diagnosis. I got this stuff back after three weeks. Not all were worth fixing or cleaning, they said. This Pentax ESPIO 738 point and shoot still boots up when you put in a pair of CR123A batteries, and the lens mechanism also extends and retracts normally, but Dong Camera Shop said that the lens was too damaged by fungus, smoked was the word he used, and that it was not worth the money to clean or fix it successfully. This is a Pentax Zoom 280p point and shoot. It starts at a wide 28mm and can even do multiple exposures. A last Dong camera shop also said that the lens is too fungus damaged to be worth it to clean. It still powers on and the lens retraction mechanism still works. This is a Pentax ESPIO AF Zoom. And again, Dong camera shop said that this lens is also too fungus damaged to be worth to clean. It still powers on and the lens retraction mechanism also still works. These are the batteries used to power test this batch of cameras I sent in for assessment. The next ones are the cameras that he was able to clean or repair. I'll open all the bags first before introducing them. This is a Minolta Hymatic 7S2. I last used this in 2012. I'll link to my album of photos taken with it in the description below. The lens was so hazy with fungus as of January 2022, but look at it now, so clear. Don Camera Shop did a good job. He also cleaned the silvery finish of crusty rust. It looks so fresh now. Even after dropping in a fresh LR44 button cell battery, the selenium light meter is sort of not super working anymore, so you'll just have to guesstimate the exposure. But since this is a mostly mechanical rangefinder aside from that light meter, you can still operate the camera even without a battery, or in this case, even with a battery but a faulty selenium light meter. This is a Canon Epoca 135 bridge camera. It's basically a point and shoot but with a very long telephoto reach. The form factor is very interesting, you hold it like a 90s style camcorder. The flash mechanism is another unique thing about this camera. It's hidden under its lens cap. The lens zoom and retraction mechanism had some issues, so that was the one thing that Dong Camera Shop fixed. They also cleaned the lens of some fungus. After that, you drop in a 2CR5 battery and it works like a charm. See the lens retraction mechanism in action here. I've never used this camera, but I'll eventually try it when I have time. This is the slot where you load the film. I forgot to shoot it in this unboxing video repaired gear but it comes with a small infrared remote control for hands off shooting.
This is a Yashica Electro 35 GSN rangefinder. Some people call it the poor man's Leica. This is a diagram of the battery configuration. LR44 button cell up top and a CR123A below. Its lens was caked in fungus as of January 2022 and Don Camera Shop did a fine job of cleaning the glass. It looks like new now. He also cleaned all the silver accents of crusty dust and rust. There was also a problem with the Yashica's shutter mechanism and they also fixed it and that added a bit to the cost. I last used this in 2007. I'll link to my album of photos taken with this Yashica in the description below. This shoots in aperture priority mode only. You cannot choose the shutter speed. It is a fully mechanical rangefinder, so you can operate it without a battery. But putting in a battery enables you to use the built-in selenium light meter, and it also lights up the over-under exposure warning lights. There is a battery check button that lights up the film counter window. This is a Contax 139 quartz film SLR. I got this as a gift in 2012, but I've never actually shot with it. The lens was so hazy with the fungus as of January 2022, and Don Camera Shop restored the glass as best as he could. There were a few black spots in the mirror and lens that could not be removed. There was also a problem with the Contax's shutter mechanism, and they also fixed it, and that added a bit to the cost. This is an interchangeable lens camera, compatible with any lens with a CY mount. I only have this one lens though. It takes an LR44 button cell battery for its light meter, but you can actually operate it without batteries as it is a fully mechanical SLR. Just guesstimate the exposure yourself. This is a Canon EOS 850 film SLR. I last used this in 2009. I'll link to my album of photos taken with it in the description below. There was something wrong with the shutter mechanism and Don Camera Shop repaired that, and they also cleaned the slightly hazy mirror a bit. It uses a 2CR5 battery. This is a fully electronic mid 90s era film SLR, so it will not function without a battery. It should be able to read DX coded film. This is a point-and-shoot version of an SLR in the sense that it has a mirror and it allows for interchangeable lenses, but it is a super basic device with no shutter priority or manual modes. It has no aperture priority mode either, but if your lens is an aperture ring, you can use that. It uses modern EF lenses that can electronically communicate with the camera. Once I have time to test shoot these cleaned and repaired cameras, I'll be making individual videos. Please do check out the various links to related past work I've shared in the description below. For now, hope you enjoy this quick peek into the vintage gear I got fixed two months ago in January 2022. Please thumb it up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to be updated when I upload again. See you next video.